Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Neoliberal Podcast, part of the Progressive Policy Institute. I'm your host, Jeremiah Johnson. This week's guest is Dennis Malinin. He's a Russian language journalist living in New York City, and he runs an independent YouTube channel called The Bureau that provides Russian language news about both the situation in Russia, Ukraine, and America. And the topic of today's podcast is Russian language media and what's been going on for journalists and people trying to report on the war in Ukraine and the situation in Russia and Eastern Europe generally, and what that's like for people who are trying to do it in Russian language to a Russian audience. Obviously, this is a pretty complex topic, and I'm really glad that we have Dennis with us today. So, Dennis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So I guess the first thing we should do is just tell people a little bit about yourself. Can can you tell us about your background and your history as a journalist in Russian media? Uh, I'm uh, born and raised uh, in Russia, in Russian uh, city Yekaterinburg, and it's like a Siberian uh, city. I uh, studied journalism and worked on a local news channel. It's my first uh, job as a journalist and reporter for uh, local news, uh, nightly news. And uh, then I moved to uh, Moscow and worked for six years for a Russian state uh, TV channel Russia One. It's actually the uh, biggest and main uh, uh, state uh, TV network in the Russia. If it was between uh, 2008 and uh, 2013. And just before Russia took a Crimea, uh, I left, actually ex escaped uh, Russia and uh, 2014 i just moved to to new york to the united states last five years i worked for a russian speaking tv channel rtvi it's a company based in new york uh it's a, a russian speaking uh tv channel for russian speaking audience in uh, in us in new york uh in israel in canada in ukraine Everywhere except uh, the Russia. This channel not not uh, broadcasting in Russia in the cable, but uh, audience can watch uh, YouTube. Uh, since uh, war uh, in uh, Ukraine began, uh, as we all know, uh, in February twenty twenty fourth, just uh, in the middle of March, last March, I show I had to leave our TV channel and run my own. Uh, YouTube channel with my friends. We just launched in uh, June, last June. We launched our independent uh, YouTube channel, The Bureau, and it is a part of our responsibility for what's uh, going on now in Ukraine, in uh, Russia, and our mission now, as we understand, it's provide independent uh, view for a Russian audience in America, in Canada, in everywhere where a Russian speaking audience is uh, watching, uh, we, we think our mission is provide independent view about uh, how American life, how America view on uh, war in Ukraine, how America understand and American people understand a uh, relationship between uh, Russia and Western country. Because uh, for now, actually, not too many uh, news outlets which provide independent view for Russian speaking community uh, everywhere, not actually for uh, for in inside of the Russia, because now in Russia we almost see it's it's very similar with uh, North Korea or probably Iran uh, if we talk about journalism situation, because freedom of press is completely stopped and end in the Russia now. I want to talk about the war in Ukraine, obviously, but before we do that, I'd love to just talk a little bit about the history of, of your work and the history of you working in Russian media. Mm -hmm. When were you in journalism school? It was uh, 25, early uh, 2000s, 2005. Almost 20 years ago. It was uh, just the uh, first years when uh, Vladimir Putin became a Russian president. 
and it was definitely uh, another uh, country. I'm very curious about what the atmosphere was like uh, a decade ago or, or in 2005, because, you know, it, it, obviously in the Soviet Union, there was no freedom of the press. And then today, there's no freedom of the press, it seems like, under Putin. But was there a period of time in the middle, in those middle decades, where the freedom was actually more, where you felt like journalism had a real chance? Uh, it's uh, actually it's very interesting I think because uh, when I was born I, I was born in Soviet Union actually the last years of the Soviet Union and uh, 1990s it was a, it was incredible time for Russian journalism because uh, everywhere in the locals in the in the city uh, we born and raised local news outlets my my city uh, Ekaterinburg it was uh, one of incredible city because we have a 20 local news uh, local TV station. Can you imagine it? 20 uh, news uh, 20 uh, news uh, station independent which uh, broadcast every day uh, on news shows. Uh, the, it was just uh, early early steps uh, first steps of Russian independent. Uh, media and we see uh, independent uh, newspapers, magazines, and 1990s, these years, was a completely freedom of speech in the Russia. And since uh, Vladimir Putin became a, became a prime minister and then president in uh, 2000s, his, uh, his uh, step by step just reduced uh, influ influence of Russian media to the Russian people. And first, I think it's the first one of the first steps of Vladimir Putin uh, when he became president was uh, uh, a for an attack to independent TV channel NTV. It uh, one of the best TV channel at that time uh, in the Russia. It the uh, best news, the film, best documentary, best serials, best every every, every everything. But when we uh, what we can see in the in the Russian TV at that time it was a TV, TV channel NTV and uh, Vladimir Putin just uh, shut this channel down because this channel is uh, has uh, many critics for Russia, uh, Vladimir Putin it was uh, so because of submarine Kursk it was because of uh, explosion of uh, home in the Moscow in 1999 uh, war, war in Chechnya, and many many things, which we see uh, in uh, in uh, Russia, uh, just when uh, Vladimir Putin became a president. So, when you were growing up, you feel like you had kind of examples of of really important journalism being done, and you were inspired by this. Do you think that that's changed? That kids who are growing up today just don't see that kind of journalism being done uh when i when i when i was uh, the, the child and when i studied journalism i was impressed what what i th i like what uh, russian journalism do it it's free completely free, free uh, russian journalism free of the uh, from of the government uh, pressure and uh, when i study in the journalism school and when I uh, just uh, make my first steps as a journalist in local uh, news, one of the part of uh, important part of the social uh, social uh, life, I think I have a responsibility for my uh, audience, for a uh, resident of this town when I uh, born and raised, because I provide uh, I I talk my audience I what's going on with our city. Uh, which problem we have, uh, we uh, help uh, people from my city to dissolve the problem because we uh, we try to raise uh, many many different question many different uh, questions attend uh, raise attention to different problem in social life in pol in in political life and and many 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 things it's any any i think any local news uh, channel work at the same time in uh, in russia in europe in uh, united states it's the same problem it's local news for local people it's 
uh, everything is understandable but when i moved to the move to the uh, moscow and work for national wide uh, tv channel i start to understand how this uh, this uh, propaganda machine started the work because it was when i was to the uh, to the Mo when i mo moved to the uh, moscow it was uh, 2008 uh, Dmitry Medvedev uh, just became a new president and it was uh, on the one side, on the one hand, uh, it was feel like a uh, new president and uh, fresh air. On the second hand, we understand that uh, we see some censorship, uh, some agenda from the uh, president office, from the Kremlin and etc etc but it was just a kind of how i understand now it was just the first steps how uh, kremlin built a propaganda machine which we see completely finished now was that process fast did it happen all at once or do you think it was more gradual and the change was slow just a little bit at a time it's it was in in many think it was uh, very slow in few think it was very fast because uh, first uh, first uh, steps uh, as i mentioned uh, when vladimir putin became a president it was uh, removing a critical uh, a bright critical from the air uh, when uh, submarine kursk was a disaster in the northern uh, ocean just after uh, first uh, big report about uh, vladimir putin lie about uh, submarine kursk disaster uh, author of this report sergey derenko was removed from the tv channel one it was uh, 2000s just a few months after vladimir putin became a president and a few months after that uh, tv channel ntv was was actually closed and uh, completely uh, demolished. But uh, another thing, uh, it's a psycho psychological process which uh, Russian uh, Russian uh, government uh, tried to change uh, psycho psychology of uh, Russian journalists. It's not a fast process. It's uh, it's need to years and even decades to uh, teach. A Russian journalist obey government because uh, in a, in a normal life you understand uh, that uh, journalist it's one of the power uh, journalism it's a, a essential thing for a healthy government uh, and healthy state and life but in Russia uh, government understand and vladimir putin understand media as a part of the government for vladimir putin media it's a, just a pr uh, department of the kremlin and for mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for finished that uh, they walked a very long way from the 2000s to 2014 i think because uh, crimea it was the milestone when uh, you think it when Crimea happened everything changed I think so because uh, many people when uh, Vladimir Putin in the beginning of uh, his uh, his time uh, make a many many uh, mistake uh, it was North Ost uh, many tra very tra tragic uh, very big tragedy for Russian it was 20 years exactly 20 years ago theater was uh, take a host hostages in a theater in the middle of uh, Moscow in the center of the Moscow and almost thou almost thousand people was hostages for uh, was taken for hostage uh, for three days and 300 people was killed and nobody know still what's going on everything is secret everything is uh, investigation is fake uh, two years after that uh, was a tragedy in Beslan. It's uh, in the southern border of Russia, and a fake investigation and etc. etc. But still, in first decade of the Russia of the presidency of uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, no nobody uh, seriously understand what's going on in uh, Russian media. 
uh, it was a period of uh, of health out of wealthy for many Russian people. It was period of uh, happiness of you sh- you should understand first first decade of uh, Vladimir Putin presidency at t- it is time when uh, price for the oil was incredibly high and uh, income for many people in Russia was uh, increase uh, Russian people learned to how to in uh, make a money and in uh, spend it for consumer uh, think it's for restaurant for uh, traveling for build own home and something something else this thing we not, not have in uh, when Boris Yeltsin was president and early and many people think uh, in Russia uh, okay we have a money uh, we can travel at outside of the Russia we can uh, bought a very big flat TV we can bought a, a computer we can bought the car and if we can uh, see independent news okay we can accept it and this is what uh, Rus- uh, Vars- Vladimir Putin power is based it's a middle middle class which uh, accept this uh, this rule yeah if i can if i can bring prosperity then mm-hmm. you know you'll accept me as the leader even if you don't like other things yes uh, they uh, russian people uh, on at that time I uh, think if uh, if Vladimir Putin bring a prosperity uh, as prosperity as uh, they understand yes because prosperity without freedom of press it's not prosperity actually but they think uh, prosperity it's when you can uh, buy a car you can buy uh, take a credit you can travel overseas etc etc and they just uh, that's just allow uh, to Vladimir Putin to uh, make a first uh, make a, some steps to uh, remove uh, independent media from the Russian so let's let's talk about the more recent work things that have happened can you tell me this year what are the things that led to you kind of leaving your job working for you know kind of a, a big Russian media organization and starting an independent organization it was some some long way and and another thing it was very quickly uh, for five years I work uh, for RTVI TV channel it's in the, when I start this work five years ago it was completely independent and completely free uh, TV channel I worked as a senior uh, editor uh, and I uh, develop evening news uh, show and I was completely free to decide which topic I can add to my uh, news list which topic it's not enough interesting for our audience when I when I uh, just uh, grow grow up with this uh, team uh, in in the end of uh, this time I became a, actually head of the ed- editor he- head of uh, editorial in uh, in New York because uh, this channel has a two headquarters one headquarters here in New York City and a second headquarters and actual headquarters in in the Russia but uh, these five years we here in New York have a many many freedom for what what we can uh, say in the air we doesn't have any stop list any blacklist we doesn't have any direction from the Moscow what we can do what we have to say uh, what we cannot uh, say in the air we was uh, completely in the independent from the any influence outside of our, our team but uh, just uh, since uh, war uh, is begin in uh, February 24th uh, role is changed because uh, we met uh, every day one or two or even three uh, meetings with management uh, in Russia management of the company in Russia and uh, we uh, every day we uh, received a new direction what we uh, can say in air what we cannot say in air 
should we uh, name this war as a special military operation or not? This process is probably okay for uh, Russian state media. As I worked in Russian state media 10 years ago, I understand how it's worked. And this, uh, this process is completely same as the Russian state media running. But for me, because I worked in... Uh, okay, it's Russian-speaking media, but it's media registered in uh, in United States, in New York. I worked in New York. I, I cannot uh, work as a journalist in New York and uh, doing my job according to Russian Defense Ministry. But uh, management from the Russia uh, direct me and uh, my co-workers to broadcast and uh, doing my job only according to Russian Defense Ministry said. And if uh, Russian Defense Ministry said Bucha is, doesn't happen, it's never happened, it is fake, I must according to a uh, direction from management in Moscow, uh, said it's fake and or even just keep silent and uh, did not say nothing about uh, that. Uh, it's, it's strange and completely unacceptable for me uh, because uh, I make many steps to teach myself to be a good journalist to be pro to be as professional and trust myself and it's my my uh, responsibility and my reputation for my uh, audience who trust me and when i was a uh, anchor and when i was a uh, editor and when i was uh, just a ed uh, just an executive editor uh, and this channel i think and i uh, it my uh, my opinion my audience uh, when they know it was uh, articulated by me, it, it's true. I cannot uh, keep silent about Bucha, about uh, crim uh, war criminals which uh, we see in, uh, in Ukraine from the Russian uh, military. And uh, from the, in the March, uh, March 21st, uh, our air was just shut down. It was when we talk about uh, first page of New York C New York Times. Uh, it was uh, March 21st when New York Times published about Russian soldiers uh, going to the apartment of Ukrainian and doing something, uh, killed some someone, it's a robbery. Or I, 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 it's it's a regular thing we, which we can see the last few months and just uh, after few few minutes. Uh, 20, 20 minutes after this air management from the Moscow direct to stop this broadcast and shut it down. So can you imagine we we keep broadcasting our news media. We have a guest in uh, Skype. We discussing what's going on. We are asking American experts, uh, military experts, political experts. But uh, this broadcast already shut it down from the YouTube. And after that, from the three months, uh, this channel doesn't have any political broadcasting from the New York. And the next on the next day, uh, management this direct us to stop uh, talking about Ukraine completely. So it was many. It was less than uh, three weeks after war is begun. But uh, management direct us to stop uh, talking about Ukraine and find something else to talking about in our air. Find any other topics uh, in our air. For me, it's uh, very disappointed and very unacceptable because you, you, you understand it's a uh, very, very big tragedy we can see now in, in the world. And for me as a Russian uh, r Russian citizen uh, who moved from the Russian f eight years ago and who uh, cannot uh, meet with family now and cannot even do many many things and I see how how many life uh, is broken now it's unacceptable to keep silent and uh, it's reason why I decide to step down yes yeah so that was the reason why that was when you stepped down. Can you tell us about your new project and, and what you're working on right now with your independent channel? And like, what is the work you're doing? 
And what are your goals with this new channel? Uh, we with my friends. Uh, one of uh, my friends is Harry. Is uh, was anchor and this, exactly at the time the time when uh, new show was shut down. So he and me uh, decide decide to step down at the same time at the same day. Uh, so and the third uh, member of our team is uh, Dennis Cherdov. He was. Uh, anchor for local news channel and the same uh, rtvi channel so we three of us work together and the rtvi for the last few months we all all of us uh, step it down from them rtvi uh, our we decide to run our our own uh, youtube channel because our we think uh, Russian audience here in, uh, in New York in uh, United States uh, and I think probably in another country uh, want to understand what's going on uh, and all the Russian speaking audience, especially here in New York and here in the United States, uh, want to, uh, be, uh, they uh, need to understand uh, what's going on in, uh, in Ukraine now, in Russian uh, politics and uh, people from outside of United States want to understand uh, what's going on in America? Because uh, actually, uh, we doesn't have many Russian-speaking journalists here in New York, here in America, who worked. Uh, we, we actually actually we have a f just a, probably we have a many journalists, uh, Russian-speaking journalists who work here in in uh, United States, but these journalists or work for uh, Russian uh, government media like uh, RT like uh, Russia One or even RTVI, which uh, as we understand now, it's part of Russian propaganda. Or uh, Russian journalists, uh, Russian speaking journalists work for American media and work for media on uh, English language. But our mission uh, work, working and doing product for uh, Russian speaking uh, audience, probably in US, Probably in uh, Israel, in the, even in the Russia, in uh, in Ukraine, in any other country, who would like to know what's going on in in uh, in America? First of all, because uh, nobody uh, talk about uh, what's going on in uh, what's going on in America. What what Biden said and what is mean? Uh, what's going on with inflation? What's going on with uh, price? What's going on with Trump? What's going on with uh, criminal in the street of uh, New York City? Uh, in the street of uh, New York City? Uh, because uh, situation uh, in the America and the problem of America, it's a main topic of Russian propaganda machine. Because when uh, Russian propaganda uh, describe uh, crisis uh, with the war in Ukraine, when uh, Russian propaganda describe what's going on in the war, uh, when Russia propaganda tried to describe why uh, Russia has a many problem, they show looks what's going on in America, looks what's going on in New York, many homeless, many criminals. And our mission show to Russian speaking audience what's going on actually in, uh, in, the, in uh, the United States, what's going on uh, actually in New York, and we can uh, invite to our uh, our show uh, just uh, ordinary regular regular uh, uh, New York uh, residents, uh, experts, poli political experts, guests from the Department of State, uh, guests from uh, former uh, some former military uh, generals uh, was uh, already in our air uh, we talk about uh, military operation with um, senior advisor for the uh, secretary of the state uh, we talk about uh, jo russian journalism with former chief of uh, cnn's bureau uh, jill dogerty and many many th many uh, interesting people we invite to talk about what's going on in in uh, in uh, America what's going on in Ukraine what's going on in Russia and we think we uh, our project can help russian people uh, understand 
uh, what's going on in America, how America life and how American people uh, looks uh, on uh, situation on Ukraine and situation on uh, in Russia because uh, mm -hmm. because it was it's interesting uh, interesting thing uh, Russia uh, many many process which we see in the Russia and which I read uh, in uh, Russian uh, Russian speaking even telegram channel uh, Russian spe independent uh, news outlets which uh, published outside of the Russia and uh, often is very emotional because uh, it's very close to our heart but uh, from the uh, for, for the American people for the American official uh, they try to explain it like a uh, real politics yes uh, and even when we yesterday discussed with our uh, guest from the Atlantic Council and asking when uh, how you do, how you think of how uh, Russian government uh, Vladimir Putin will uh, react to last uh, fail in the Ukraine uh, they very they answer very very uh, very general because uh, it's it's even uh, this help understand what America think about uh, about Russia, what America think about Ukraine, and w what real real American people think about what's going on in our uh, whole life. And I think it's our uh, it's our general mission. I want to talk about a couple of the different groups here because it seems like there's you know you, you can talk about what people in Russia and what kind of uh, beliefs they have because of what they see. But then you can also talk about the Russian diaspora of Russians living in America and Canada and Israel and, and all these other places and, you know, Russian speaking people and what the what those Russians who are living outside of Russia actually believe. So I, I guess I'll just start with them. How does the Russian diaspora generally feel about uh putin and about what's going on you know do, is there a particular feeling they have uh, do, or does it vary by country do like russians in europe feel differently than russians in america it, does it depend on how old they are maybe I, i'm just curious how do russians living outside of russia typically think about this it's an uh, interesting question because uh i think uh I I doesn't have any such such sociological uh, research, but I think and my uh, my uh, just uh, what I see and uh, what I talking with uh, many many uh, think here in uh, United States and even in Russia, I think uh, age and generation it's uh, and uh, explain what uh, people think about this situation. It's not not all time, but in general time, in many time, uh, generation and age can help you explain and understand what what people think. If you're talking about uh, generation with people who now is fifties, sixties years old, uh, they these people born and raised in Soviet Union. And they have a many problem in the uh, 90s because it was an uh, established uh, established period with many criminal many criminals uh, many problems many issues and for the when Putin became a president they get think which in Russia uh, name stability and stability for people uh, who now it's 16. Uh, 50s, 60s years old, uh, stability is many valuable things. And these people watched Russian government TV, uh, very conservative uh, values, they support Putin, they support the war probably, uh, and these people were, uh, lived in, in Russia, and same people with same views, it's a Russian diaspora. Uh, probably you know uh, many Russian speaking uh, resident of New York's New York doesn't uh, watch 
American media, they watch Russian speaking media, Russian uh, government media from the Russia. Uh, they cannot uh, talk in, in English and cannot uh, even basic uh, knowledge about what's going on in America. A very conservative part of the Russian community uh, in Russia and here in America. They this uh, this uh, this uh, audience support Vladimir Putin and support uh, what's going on now. Uh, what's what's Russia doing now in Ukraine? Uh, I think most uh, many younger people, uh, it was on the 15s, 20s, uh, 30s, 35, 40. Uh, this, uh, this generation is uh, born and raised already when Russia was free after uh, Soviet Union is failed. And these uh, people uh, try to do own uh, life by own rules and Trey would like to live in a free country and they would like to understand actually what's going on and they would like to know what's going on actually uh, and con uh, con some independent news outlets uh, but you probably understand uh, it's uh, Russian independent news outlets whole it's uh, in, in Telegram, in Facebook, in the mod modern digital uh, platform because and this platform it's acceptable for um, uh, for young generation and it's inconvenient for uh generation which already 60s so it's very difficult to understand how it's for works it's not whole but it's i think for many people it's uh, very uh, difficult to understand how telegram works how uh, which uh, telegram channel is uh, trustable which untrustable and this reason why uh, many young russian people it's uh, very critical uh, think um, have the many critics for russian government and they uh, can uh, consume uh, independent uh, independent uh, news and independent information about current events but for uh, many, many mm -hmm many uh, conservative audience it's uh, russian government propaganda machine it's very uh, good uh, thing to understand what's going on one of the things that's happened recently is that it, it appears that the russian army is having a lot of trouble in ukraine and there's been a, a counter offensive by ukraine and, and ukraine has reclaimed some land and i'm curious if you know how russian media has covered this and and this could be, I guess you can say, either inside Russia or outside Russia. But how is the how is the propaganda from the the national Russian media trying to spin this? And are are they saying this is uh, this is a not happening? Is that part of a plan? You know, w when things go wrong like this, what what do they do? It's a uh, interesting uh, thing because I think it's uh, one one week ago one week ago it's happened and many experts uh, say it it historical moment for this uh, for this war uh, because uh, Russian propaganda and Russian government was not ready for that and for first two days a Russian government uh, keep silent and. But Russian uh, patriotic channels, uh, patriotic uh, and conservative uh, Russian people who support the war, uh, they was not ready for that. For seven months, uh, Russian supporters who Russian people who support the war, uh, they every single day they consume uh, news with with victory. Uh, with uh, b with blood, with uh, patriotic some things about uh, Russian Russian army is the best army. It's second army of the world. We have a very 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 uh, very last model of the tanks, of the aircrafts, of the missiles, uh, and many many things. It's the best army of the world. But uh, what we saw uh, one week ago, it was a completely fail for Russian army. And uh, if uh, first uh, first uh, moving out 
from the Kyiv in the March or September or April uh, Russian army management tried to understand uh, tried to describe as a, a logical uh, logical step but uh, what we saw in the one week ago it can, cannot be explained and cannot be described as a, as a logical things because uh, Russian media said uh, another thing uh, about this situation they think everything is uh, under control everything is good Russian Russian army is uh, going through uh, Ukrainian it's we are already uh try to do uh, try to keep control under uh this region and even uh, probably you know uh russian teachers was uh was uh, hired to work on occupied territory in in the kharkiv region and uh after this happens uh many even russian propaganda prop- uh, pro- member of russian propaganda machine very famous Russian uh, anchors, very famous Russian propaganda journalists uh, asked government uh, what's going on, uh, what's happened, uh, who has to take a responsibility for that. Probably it's uh, generals, probably it's uh, Minister of Defense Sergei Shoigu, or probably uh, even Vladimir Putin. I think one of the things that's very interesting is that in the modern world, it's really hard for propagandists to, to succeed with the internet. Because if this was World War II, you know, how is a regular Russian person going to know that something bad happened in, in a battle? You know, Russia's fighting Germany and something bad happens. It's a defeat. But you just don't have to say anything. But, yeah, the internet makes it so easy for everyone to find out anything that, like, it's very difficult to lie sometimes. Yes, because you, uh, of course, you can uh, you can take uh, you can it seems like nothing nothing uh, nothing happens and keep uh, keep going uh, uh, repeat your uh, your propaganda stuff. But uh, comment uh, commentary under uh, post of Russian propagandist is open and and angry uh, Russian uh, patriots. Uh, leave a comments, many many comments, thousands comments under Russian propagandist uh, post, and this is very interesting thing because uh, if Russia, if Ukraine uh, with uh, Western country uh, weapons and Western country equipment will keep uh, moving toward uh, eastern border. We can see uh, now, uh, and even uh, in following weeks, probably months, something angry from Russian patriots. And this is uh, this is the questions: uh, What's going on next? Uh, was is uh, re- changing in the com- uh, commander? Was uh, will be uh, changing in the uh, Ministry of Defense, or even? Uh, will be uh, Sergei Shoigu was fired, and second questions which dis- discussed now in jo- in the media community, uh, and we discuss it uh, even between us, is uh, what if uh, patriotic was so angry to launch a protest in the street, and it is main problem for Russian for Russian government because a Russian and government so I want to I want to make sure that everyone understands when you say a protest you mean that these are pro war kind of pro putin yes. uh, forces it's, uh, I, I, it's already it's uh, yes but it's already uh, difficult to uh, it's very uh, think things because uh, Russian people uh, and Russian propaganda uh, rise angry in the Russian people for many months and Russian uh, patriotic people now want to blood want to kill many people it's it's really thing if you uh, if you read what the people uh, write in the comments this a very angry group of the Russian uh, Russian people they want to kill uh, 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 enemy they want to bl- many blood they want to 
uh, do something to defense how they understand defense uh, so, something uh, our values but when they see it's a uh, Russian army is failed uh, they think it's a responsibility on uh, Sergei Shoigu or someone else and it's this situation make uh, can uh, be out of the control from the Kremlin because uh, Russian Russian government uh, already easy to control uh, liberal uh, uh, liberal part of the uh, of the uh, of the of the Russian people right because they just uh, peacefully uh, make a peacefully protest in the uh, uh, Moscow streets but angry patriotic uh, people who can uh, go uh, to the street is it was it gonna be easy to uh, be out of after, out of control and this is the uh, very I think it's a very big problem gonna be very big problem for uh, Vladimir Putin and I think now uh well, Russia... this is can i ask about can i ask about something related because there has been what, what you're saying is essentially there are people who want the war to be going well and they're really really angry that it's not going well and so they're going to be looking for someone to blame yes. they're going to look wait maybe yes. it's Shoi, shoigu or maybe yes. it's someone else yes. but and and what what we've seen over the last six months there have been a lot of people who have died mysteriously and it's it's heads of oil companies it's um you know media figures it's people who are close to putin sometimes and they are fall they're falling out of windows or having unexpected heart attacks i, I mean do you think these two things are related I, I i sound like it's a conspiracy but then i i don't know if it's Maybe it is a conspiracy. I'm not sure. Um, we, we, as 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 a as a journalist, I c I cannot say it uh, definitely. It's uh, it was a, it was a, a killed. These people was killed. But uh, we uh, saw some uh, pattern how Russian government and even Vladimir Putin uh, do it. Uh, we saw what's going on in Salisbury when uh, when. Uh, uh, Sergei Skripal and his uh, his uh, daughter was uh, poisoned by Novichok. Uh, we saw uh, what's going on in uh, Alexei Navalny. He was poisoned by Novichok, and then after uh, Alexei Navalny published a film about uh, palace of Vladimir Putin and returned to the to the Moscow, Alexei Navalny was arrested and now uh, keeping in this completely horrible uh, condition in the in the jail uh, we saw as you cor abs absolutely correctly uh, mentioned a few uh, example of uh, mysteriously death uh, in uh, in many many cities it's I saw uh, yesterday in the CNN a report about nine uh, mysteriously dead in many uh, Russian uh, cities but uh, I just I just come back from the Washington DC and August 15, uh, Russian uh, Russian uh, entrepreneur Dan Rapaport just uh, just skipping from the uh, from the window in the uh, Georgetown. As you know, it's a very uh, very uh, famous uh, district in the Washington D.C. And Dan Rapaport was uh, one of the uh, critic of Vladimir Putin. He was uh, support uh, support Ukraine. Uh, he talk about talk against Vladimir Putin and uh, even uh, his uh, death it's very mystery for, for now and mystery death of uh, former minister uh, Mikhail Lesin in uh, in Washington DC uh, in 2015 it was very mystery still very mystery because it's a uh, body of Mi Mikhail Lesin has uh, many many injuries but uh dc uh police department uh just say it's okay he's he's dead uh we cannot we cannot we, we don't know uh, why it's happened it seems like accident but uh many russian journalists suspect uh russian uh russian uh military and forces to uh, it's like jeru it's like ex kgb yeah. 
uh, okay, do you be, um, yes do you ever worry about your safety or you know I'm sure you know other journalists do you think about like what happens if somebody tries to do something to me because I'm I'm reporting negative things about about Putin and his government when I moved uh, from uh, when I escaped from the Russia to America uh, I think uh, I in a safe place but uh, after what's going on with Mikhail Lesin, with uh, with uh, Sergei Skripal, with Denver Report, and many many people, uh, we already uh, know and understand that uh, Russian uh, government has an agent everywhere around the world, and even even in the United States. It's sad, but the true. Uh, even I have a family in the in the Russia, and it's it's one of the uh, set party second second uh, set things and completely Russia Russian government if if they want they can do uh, something in this way but uh, I think my uh, my uh, my resp responsibility for what for what I I think I have to do. It's keep uh, keep uh, keep going, keep uh, do some investigation. How do we do with the report case and just this morning published news story? Uh, we keep uh, keep talking about war in Ukraine, keep talking about uh, uh, Russian uh, mistakes which uh, Russian uh, governments do it, and it's our mission. It's reason why we. Uh, why, why we uh, started and why we uh, do it. Uh, I don't think uh, somebody gonna do something worse for me, but nobody can do 100% guarantee. I think so. Do you think that there's any hope for the media situation to get better in Russia anytime soon? Or is there basically no hope unless the government changes uh it's the main questions which uh, everyone uh discussed uh now and it's uh, i think we have a two uh you have to choose what is uh, two bad choice and you have to choose what is uh better than for you because uh First of all, first, 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 first way, it's Vladimir Putin uh, keep living for decades, for ten years, twenty years, thirty years, and he uh, keep uh, keep power in his hands, and nothing changed. Russia became a, uh, it's not a, it's not a North Korea, it's uh, Hitler Germany. I I think so for now, but uh, and nothing changed. Uh, second options which we have, it's um, someone from uh, closed uh, uh, some some uh, someone from a closed uh, circle of Vladimir Putin, or uh, or in result of protest or something else, and Vladimir Putin is passed away. And uh, I think, and many people are afraid that uh, Russian will be or Russian will face of big change as a as a state and as a government. And many expect that Russian can be discharged from for few parts, south parts, uh, far uh, far east, Siberia. You think Russia might be broken up yes. in this case? Yes, yes. Ru I think Russia may be broken up. And uh, we we can see uh, middle, uh, central Russia, Moscow, and some region around. Uh, south, south region, it's Chechnya, Dagestan, something else. Uh, Siberia, and far east, uh, Vladivostok, and uh, Khabarovsk, and few other uh, regions has a very close to the China because if uh, it, because many 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 uh, people in Far East is already very have a, many 
links with China and uh, Russia. I think after Vladimir Putin uh, will pass away, uh, Russia is maybe broken down. Yes, and it's it's uh, I think American government as I how I understand after. I uh, talk many times with uh, so representatives of Russian uh, of American governments. They try to uh, not uh, not allow to do it because it's civilian war, definitely civilian war in in Russia. And uh, as you understand, uh, Russia has a nuclear weapon, and if in result of uh, civilian war someone crazy is uh, take a control under and uh, nuclear weapon it's horrible thing for whole world and this is the catastrophe for whole world not for ukraine not for the russian it may be catastrophe for the whole world and this is the worst uh, worst of what we could see uh, in the result of this war and this is the I think it's uh, Vladimir Putin in February 24th begin uh, begin the game which doesn't have any uh, any right right steps any steps it's going to the to the to the worse. So we're coming up on time now, and I'll ask the question that I always ask at the end of the podcast, which is where can people go to learn more. We'll obviously link your show, um, the Bureau. We'll provide a link to that in the in the show notes. But a lot of that will be Russian speaking. I, I know you do interviews in English sometimes, um, but other than you know your channel, what other places should people, you know, Americans or Europeans who listen to this show, what would you recommend for them to read or to watch to understand what's going on in Russia? Um, I mean, in the, if you re read uh, in English, uh, I, w one of the uh, media which uh, every every journalist trusts now it's a Medusa, and they have a English version Medusa in English, and this is the media an independent media based in the uh, Latvia in the Riga, and they cover current events uh, in the Russia in the war in Ukraine. And they make uh, very, very interesting and important reports uh, from the war, from the Russian uh, about the Russian politics, and very, very interesting. If you can uh, watch and understand uh, Russian, you can watch TV Rain. It's an independent TV channel. They just relaunch and they try to uh, cover what's going on now in uh, in uh, in Russia and in uh, in U Ukraine and this is the main sources for uh, try to understand what's going on uh, in uh, in Russia and what's uh, going on with uh, Russian people now I think so and for the books I uh, highly recommend uh, books of uh, Mikhail Ziger it's uh, one of the Russian journalists, a very, very talented Russian journalist who was editor-in-chief for TV Rain. And then uh, he writes some a book about uh, Russian government and very interesting uh, historical uh, books uh, and very easy to write and very easy to understand. Uh, they have a book. Uh, in English and French and many many uh, many many language, I highly recommend it to if you would like to understand uh, what Vladimir Putin think, and if you would like to understand why this uh, happens now, what we what we uh, how how Russia come to this situation, highly recommend it to under, to write this book. Well, I think we will link to all of that in the show notes so that people can find it. I also just want to say thank you for doing this interview. I know it's got to be tough to, you know, talk about your own country and, and criticize it so much because obviously there's there's many things that can be wonderful about Russia and the Russian people. And, you know, it's it's obviously it's just sad that the government is 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 the, 
what's happening right now. So I think the work that you're doing is is really important. And uh, I encourage anyone who is, you know, speaks Russian or has Russian speaking friends to share this with uh, with their friends. One more time, I just want to thank my guest, Dennis. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy.